it seems that we're having some technical issues there with our guest, uh, Benedict Lani uh, Dubey. He will be joining us back in just a moment. But the conversation, of course, yes, happening. Yes, okay, I think he's back, but let me come from. Are you back with me now? I am. Oh, okay. Well, I <laughs> no problem. No, Please no, continue. No. So you, you've taken us from Thibo and Becky to Jacob Zuma, who, of course, the president was his vice as well. And then he took over from him at the ANC uh, conference in 2017. And now there's yet another scandal involving yet another South African president. Yes. And so that's why I'm saying this. When, when we look at the sequence of events uh, and, and, and we look at the characters and the script, you know, they... It, 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 South Africa is, is, is not in the hands of the South African natives. ANC is not a, a governing party party. It's just a, a, an administrator of the South African natives. And so ANC is a powerless organization. They are puppet masters who pull strings uh, behind the whole thing that you are experiencing mm -hmm. in our country. And ANC is a useful food, is willing to be used by the ruling class of who are the ruling classes is the mineral energy complex. And who are the mineral energy complex? Are those who keep on shifting the, the, the leadership in our country? And those are the people who are really created uh, the systems and structures that are based on colonialism and apartheid to still maintain the status quo of white supremacy in our country. And so if we are going to deal with the issue of Syria, I can assure you, next time you invite me and say, let's deal with the issue of Titi Mabuza or of Paul Mashatila, the question that we have to ask ourselves here in, in, in South Africa is a very simple one. What makes black people to fight each other so much where there are so many things that they can be dealing with? Because this fight of Cyril Ramaphosa, and we know that the, the, the Cyril Ramaphosa and, and the others, you know, I think, you know, is him who told us that his own political party is an accused number one when it comes to corruption in South Africa. He told us himself, Cyril Ramaphosa, that ANC members are like hyenas and scavengers. And also the former, um, former president of our country, Halema Motlante, he told us here in South Africa that ANC is a part of gangsters. Mm -hmm. And so if the, the organization presidents are, or are describing the characters who constitute ANC, it clearly shows that ANC is not in power, but ANC is there for itself. And so this fight that you are seeing, as, I'm, as I've been saying previously, is the fight of the Vikings. You know, in, 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 in they always tell us that uh, there's no honor among thieves. And so what is happening? Some of the thieves who are waiting, they just want this one to be removed so that they can go in and put their hands in the cookie jar. And so ANC is just being used because even that cookie jar is not that deep enough. You know, it's just a, a, a it's not a bottomless um, cookie jar, but it's just a cookie jar that has been constructed by the ruling class as an entrapment of our native leaders here in South Africa. So you, you lay a lot of things on the table. And when someone who is in Nigeria, who is in Rwanda, who is in Kenya, is looking at this situation and seeing the president uh, of South Africa, the most industrialized country on the continent, but also the country with the largest uh, disparity, income disparity in the world, there's a very big issue there be between what we expect from the administration and the president and even the party as well and what we're seeing on the ground. So let's talk a little bit further about that because when... Um, when Cyril Ramaphosa took over from Jacob Zuma, he said he was going to fight corruption in state institutions. In Nigeria, there's a terminology that one of our presidents have told us that corruption fights back. Uh, when you're attempting to fight corruption, those who are benefiting from the status quo, from corrupt activity, from graft, will fight back so nothing changes. So when you look at what the president said when he took office in 2018 to what we find now in 2022, do you think there was even any attempts or even any progress made in trying to root out corruption, particularly state corruption in South Africa? Look, you know, let's just, let's just be honest here in South Africa. The people who are making South Africa to be this highly industrialized, as, as, as we have said, is not us. 
uh, the natives or the Africans or the black people of this country, but are the white people, you know. These systems were created during colonialism and apartheid. And, and post-apartheid, we have not created anything, you know. What we have created is this discourse of stealing, you know. And when you go to the state-owned enterprises that were created by the so-called white people previously, today they are falling apart. Why are they falling apart? Because we are stealing from this state-owned a, 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 a state on enterprises. And so when Cyril was telling us that he uh, is going to come in and, and clean and, 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 and the government is going to be a government with moral and ethics, some of us, we knew it very well because Cyril himself, when he entered that particular office, we were screaming left and right and saying, tell us who was funding your campaign. And the same Sir Ramaphosa, he killed, he was alleged that he has killed thousands and number of people in Marikana on behalf of, of Lon Me. And so what he was saying, we were saying to ourselves, look, the emperor is naked, you know, meaning that what he's saying, we know it very well that he's not going to do it, you know. And so we must not be surprised of what is happening in, in our country. But the fact of the matter is. The black people in this country, they will always continue to be at each other's throats because we don't have an agenda and we are not principled on what we want as black South Africans. Because there are issues that are still uh, that are still hanging, you know, the issue of land, mm. the issue of skewed economic distribution in our country, the issue of our education when it comes to the black child. Those things has, have not been addressed. But since 1990, 1994, what we are addressing is the corruption of the ANC, nothing else. In 1994, when there was Tabon Peggy, we we're talking about the issue of Amstig. When it was Jacob Zuma, it was the issue of Gupta. And now is, 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 is Sir Ramaphosa is the issue of Pala Pala. And all these fights have nothing to do with us, but is the fight of the black political elite in our country. So... This now leads me to ask about what the general populace thinks about this. Because if you have the African National Congress, which uh, says it's probably the largest uh, political party on the continent, but it's the party that has been with South Africa since apartheid times and out of apartheid times. But we've had successive presidents now, at least three successive presidents who have been ANC presidents linked to corruption situations. What is the general feeling of South Africans towards the party as it is? We know that there's an elective Congress coming up where where it was initially expected that President Ramaphosa would stand for re-election ahead of 2024, but all those things are quite right now in flux. But in terms of the general sentiment, with yet another corruption scandal in South Africa, what's the sentiment of South Africans? Look, I, I think South Africans now are starting to face the reality that ANC was not for, 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 for the marginalized, for the oppressed, but ANC, while it was in exile, was captured by the West. You know, that's why the head office of the ANC was in London. You know, that's why most of the ANC leaders, you know, were studying in London. You know, they speak English more than uh, fluently. Uh, and, and they even surpass some of the, the or some of the British to say, how come these people can be so eloquent into uh, when it comes to, to the English language? And so th there was this indoctrination, you know, and this indoctrination, it was to serve the interest of the British Empire. And so we, we, we must not even think that the ANC, it was created, marketed, and popularized by the black people. No, it was the same mineral energy complex. It was the white, white people who created the ANC for this specific reason, to say post, nine, post the so-called the, 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 the National Party, we need a national party that will serve the interests of the British party. That national party must be a national party of the natives. And so they gave us the ANC. It was an imposition because we don't elect these ANC leaders, you know. And the question that you have to ask ourselves, who elect these leaders? Who give us these leaders? Because for us, even our electoral system is very, is very, how, how can I put it? It's very disempowering, you know, because as we speak, if really we say in South Africa there is democracy, the principles of democracy is that let the voice of the majority speak. But we as the majority, we can't speak 
but who is speaking is the minority. How do they speak? Look at the economy, look at their living condition, look at their education, and look at us. And so there's no democracy in South Africa, and even this constitution was not meant for us, but it was meant to safeguard and protect the interests of the white people. Hence, you find Sir Ramaphosa, you find Jacob Zuma and this ANC in a serious predicament because as much as they try to mimic and as much as they, as they try to assimilate the white power, but the white power always reject them and the white power always put them in jail, just like you have seen with Jacob Zuma. And same thing with Tabon Peggy. Tabon Peggy was... Well, there was a lobby group that was saying Tabon Peggy must go to hell because of the HIV and AIDS. And so this whole thing, what is happening in our country, the white people, they give us weak leaders, they give us twisted leaders, they give us crooked leaders, so that at the end of the day, when these leaders are in power, they rule at the behest of the mineral energy complex because they know that at any time they can go to jail. So as well as the people who are waiting at the gate to take this wicked baton from Sir Ramaphosa are the wicked individuals who might not take us anywhere. And so we are in a red race and a very painful red race here in South Africa as, as the South African natives. All right. And final question to you. Um, the crimes that the president is alleged to possibly have committed include kidnapping, uh, money laundering, concealing a crime as well. Um, and we've seen the panel reports, which says he does have a case to answer and he may have violated his oath of office. There's speculation that there be one major announcement in any time from now. Do you think that President Sir Ramaphosa should resign because of this case, even though he hasn't been charged, even though he has not faced a court of law? Sir Ramaphosa was not supposed to be the president of this country from the, from, 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 from the first, uh, from the election in, in our country. He was, not supposed to, he was not supposed to be the president of this country. This consultation is not making with us, ordinary people, but I can assure you, the people that is consulting are the owners of South Africa who are going to give the go ahead or not. And if the owners of South Africa, they still find it relevant, you know, because now is that the weakest point? You know, you can't do anything that they want, you know. And so they might say, look, go on and be in, in, in power and do whatever that will tell you. And then Cyril will do that because he wants to, to survive, you know. But I can assure you, the man is destiny to go to jail if he can go against the will of those who control this country. He can go okay. against the will of us, South African natives, because us, we are powerless. But he can't go against the will of those people who control the minerals, control the financial sector in our country. And so I think the consultation is not with the ANC, but is with those people who control the economy of this country. All right, Benedict, it's a, it's a fast-moving situation. We know the president um, is expected to make some sort of announcement. It could be today, it could be the weekend, it could be next week, but we'll be following very closely with it. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks a lot. And it's a conversation that uh, we are very, they're following very closely right here on New Central. As you know, many across the continent are as well. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa caught up in a corruption scandal after coming to power in 2018, saying that he would, in fact, fight corruption. We'll be following closely to see how things develop in the coming days. And that's how we wrap things up on this episode of Business Edge. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV. You can also head to our website, www.newcentral.africa and download our mobile app. At 12 p.m. West African time, News Central now comes your way. But until I come your way again at 11 a.m. West African time on Monday, I remain Tolulokwe Adela Rubalogun. Do have a fantastic weekend.